Hi Builder, I am Roberto Gorni, I am an IoT Specialist Solution Architect here in AWS, and today I want to show you how to leverage an existing .NET library to decode a custom payload sent by an IoT device. Okay, so let's start from the agenda. I'll go through the simple architecture that I have implemented to cover this use case. Then I'll show you how to deploy the required component in a convenient way. We will have a demo with a data simulator sending binary payload and the AWS Lambda decoding it. And finally, we will wrap up with the possible next steps. But first of all, here is where you can find the source code that I'm going to use for this video. Let's start with the architectural diagram. On the left side, we have a device sending a custom binary payload as an MQTT message to AWS IoT Core. In my case, this will be a simulated device implemented as a console application in .NET using a common MQTT library. In AWS IoT Core, I've configured an AWS IoT rule which is triggered by the data received from the device. In the select statement of the rule, I'm calling an AWS I Lambda function written in .NET, which leverage an external class library to perform the decoding of the binary payload and return the JSON to the rule. Now in the rule, you can trigger one of the possible actions to send the decoded data to a downstream service. In my case, I just republished the JSON payload into another MTTT topic in AWS IoT Core. As we saw from the architectural diagram, we have a few components to deploy. We have a Lambda function, an AWS IoT rule, and an IoT device that need to connect to AWS IoT Core. We need a set of IAM and IoT Core policies as well. To deploy all those things, you can just open the console and create them manually. As an alternative, you can use AWS CLI or Outer a cloud formation stack. For this video, I decided to use AWS Cloud Development Kit. With AWS CDK, you can define your cloud infrastructure using code. It's a kind of abstraction layer on top of cloud formation that leverages the expressive power of a familial programming language to define your application resources. Let's see now this stuff in action. I'm going to open the GitHub repository and follow the instruction. As a first step, I'm going to clone the repository using the following command. Then I'm going to create the certificate for the device simulator using the AWS IoT create key and certificate command. With this command, I'm asking basically AWS IoT Core Service to create a certificate for the device. The certificate then is stored locally here in this host. So as you can see, we have the certificate CRT file that contains the actual device certificate and the private and public key. With the previous command, we create a certificate. We also register the certificate in AWS IoT Core and activated it. So double check that we can go in IoT Core console, security, certificate, and this is the certificate that we have generated before. As you can see, there is no policy attached and no things attached. This will be done later by the CDK stack. In order to connect securely to the cloud, we have also to download the Amazon root CA that is signing the certificate from the AWS IoT Core endpoint. We can double check that everything is there, including the Amazon root CA, the certificate for the device and private and public key. If this is the first time you're running a CDK on that account, you need to execute CDK bootstrap up front. Once a CDK is bootstrapped, you can just run this command. CDK deploy all, providing the necessary context parameter. This is going to deploy two stack. One is the stack required to run the simulator, and the other stack is composed by the AWS Lambda, the AWS IoT Core rule, and the necessary policy. CDK is going to create a couple of IAM policy, 
and is asking you for the approval before creating that. You can simply say yes. Once the CDK deployment is completed, we can see the outcome in CloudFormation. In CloudFormation, we should have a couple of stack. One is the IoT Core Infrastructure stack, and the other one is the IoT Simulated Device stack. The first one created the AWS Lambda and configured the AWS IoT rule. The other one, IoT Simulated Device stack, is going to create the IoT Things representing the simulator, the device simulator, and attach the, pro the policy into the certificate that we provide as the CDK attributes. Now we can check what the CDK deployed. Let's go in AWS IoT console. Let's select things. We have now uh, things created and this things has the certificate attached. This is the certificate that we have created before with AWS CLI command. This certificate now has the policy attached and the policy allow to connect to AWS IoT Core and to publish to the encoded data topic that we have defined as a parameter to the CDK stack. Under message routing rules, we have the decoded custom payload rules. In this rule, in the SQL statement, we are going to execute the AWS Lambda function. In this case, this is pointing to the AWS Lambda ARN created by the CDK. As a payload, we are providing the base64 encoded payload coming from the device and sent to the encoded data topic. As an action, we are basically receiving back the value from the Lambda and we republish it to the decoded data. Let's see now that in action. In order to start the device simulator, we need to change the device simulator configuration file. As a first step, we need to understand what is the AWS IT Core data endpoint. We execute this command. This is describing the endpoint for the data plane of AWS IT Core. Now we can copy this value. and we can modify the device simulator configuration JSON file. We can replace this value with the actual endpoint. For the other parameter, we can leave it as it is, as this is the actual value that we provide to the CDK and the actual certificate and private key in Amazon root CA that we downloaded in the previous step. In the GitHub repository, under source, uh, lambda, we have function and we have the actual function handler. This is basically receiving the base64 payload, the code from payload string, from a base64 string into a byte array, and execute an external library, my payload deserialize method. So this is deserializing the byte array into an actual object. If, this, if the deserialization works, set also the is valid parameter to true, set the payload, and return it. If there is any exception, it's just made it modified is valid as a false, and response exception to the exception, so that uh, this can be eventually handled in the rule. If we check under custom serialization library, there is the object my payload that is actually representing uh, the actual payload that the device simulator will send out, including an equipment name, a timestamp, a temperature, and humidity. And we have the two methods, one to serialize as a byte array, that object, and the other one to deserialize the byte array to that object. This will also be used uh, by the device simulator itself. Under device simulator, we have a class application, a console application that is connecting 
to AWS IoT Core thanks to the information we provide into the device simulator configuration JSON. It basically loads the certificate, connect thanks to the MQTT client library, create my payload object with some simulated values, and send as an MQTT message. And that's it what the simulation library does. Let's now execute it. In order to start the simulator, we can just, uh, in the folder where the simulator is, execute.net run. But before doing so, let's go and uh, subscribe to encoded data and decoded data as well. So let's run the simulator now. And this is going to publish a message to encoded data. And uh, the Lambda function will be executed to the rule engine. And we can see the decoded data. So in the encoded data, we cannot see the value in a proper form because this is basically a byte array. In the decoded data, we can see that uh, the value coming from the encoded uh, data topic is uh, parsed by the lambda and this is the JSON returned by the lambda. So we can see equipment name, example equipment, the timestamp, the temperature and the humidity that was sent by the simulator device. And that's all. Please remember to clean up uh, the CDK stack with the, the following command. In this case, we are going to remove all the infrastructure created with the CDK, with the exception the certificate that we created with the CLI, so that you have to navigate to the AWS IoT console and remove the certificate by yourself. Okay, builders, let's do a summary. We saw a device simulator sending binary payload to AWS IoT Core. An AWS IoT rule trigger a lambda, which decode the payload into a JSON. That rule just republishes it to another MDT topic right now. If you want, eventually, you can use a different activity rule and feed a downstream service to further process and store your data. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the demo. See you soon.